is going to be a very interesting union budget because it comes at a time when the world economy is in a flux there are fears of a recession globally and india seems to be the bright spark but how do you ensure that we maximize that position on the other hand it's also the last full budget before the next general elections so the questions are now abounding on whether this will be in some form a populist budget. Ahead of uh, the union budget, I'm speaking today with Arvind Panagriya. He's, of course, the first vice chair of the Niti Aayog and also professor at Columbia University. Mr. Panagriya, thank you so much for speaking with us. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Very happy to be with you, Tamanna. So, so let's begin with uh, sort of the context that I set up. Yes. What will be the boxes to tick off in this union budget for the finance minister? And do you think the upcoming election in 2024 will be somewhere on the horizon at all in the back of her mind? Uh, I mean, as you just said, you know, this is the last full budget uh, before the elections. Uh, so I, I imagine that, you know, it will play some role, but I don't think it will play a big role. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, ultimately there will be the interim budget before the elections and if the government really feels that it needs to uh, play up a bit uh, the uh, populism, uh, it still has that opportunity in, in the interim budget. Uh, so that's one fact. And the other fact is that, you know, this government has generally been responsible in terms of even when uh, adopting, you know, populist uh, uh, schemes, the, the, these are schemes which do uh, actually bring in uh, uh, assured benefits uh, to whoever the intended beneficiary is. So, so even if you know it, it, some of it is done, it, it will take a form uh, which would uh, uh, have real impact rather than you know simply wasting the money. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's one, and then we can talk about you know what else the budget uh, uh, could try to do. Absolutely. We'll definitely get into it. But I just want to, you know, set the stage a little bit. Uh, that is a big domestic consideration, right? The next election and whether that will play out or not. What is the form that populism will take, if at all? That is one part of it. The second part of it is sort of cementing India's position as a nation that will do relatively well. And here the word relative is key. Do you think that the budget is a vehicle to sort of set the stage for that? It certainly is, because, you know, budget is a source of signaling. Uh, so, you know, uh, what it says, how it says is also going to matter. Now, you know, it, uh, because of the uh, because of this being the last full budget, uh, uh, you know, it may not uh, carry very many bold reforms, but still uh, the signal uh, has to be there. So, you know, as an example, I'll give you and then we can talk more. Uh, uh, as, as an example, there should be something, you know, stating about the government's uh, continued intent to privatize the public sector enterprises, the public sector banks, uh, monetization of assets. So, you know, even things that are ongoing, uh, which uh, really are not new reforms, but, but uh, some reiteration uh, would be a useful thing. And especially, you know, we are uh, at a time when uh, multinationals are looking for China plus one strategy. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they are comparing us to some of the other potential uh, uh, competitors uh, 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 in that category of countries. Uh, so, so I think some of this sort of thing will have to be there. You know, another big reform slash populist move depends on however you want to look at it. But one big expectation seems to have come from the middle class this time round on tax exemptions, and you have a very interesting view on it. Um, you're saying that, okay, you can tinker with the tax slabs, but remove all the exemptions. Uh, I want you to first lay out your thought for this. Yes, okay, so that, that's one reform actually which can be announced in this budget, should be announced. Uh, uh, it will be both popular and efficiency enhancing. So currently, the way our system is, you know, uh, 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 for most taxpayers, uh, a large number of exemptions uh, and uh, then relatively high tax rates. Uh, so uh, uh, what uh, these exemptions do is to introduce a kind of, you know, uh, inequity across taxpayers with the same income. So, you know, if you have uh, the same income that I have, but you are spending your income in such a way that you are able to make use of the exemptions. 
but I'm spending my income in a way that I can't make use of the exemptions, that I pay more taxes than you do. Uh, that I think is not only inequitable, but is also distortionary because it in a way is encouraging people to spend money in a certain way rather than according to their own priorities. So a good tax system usually minimizes exemptions, uh, uh, you know, and ideally really eliminates uh, all of them uh, and keeps the tax rates low. Now, the government had tried this, you know, in the budget 2020-21. Uh, it introduced an alternative tax schedule, which uh, taxpayers could use uh, uh, largely, you know, very few exemptions were actually admissible under that schedule, but uh, the tax rates still remained quite high. As a result, there have not been very many takers. You know, only people like me, you know, who have zero exemptions. So I certainly use that uh, tax schedule myself. But uh, everybody I have spoken to in, in my family and my wife's family and so forth, nobody is using it. So what, what we need to do, the spirit of the reform was correct, that, uh, you know, uh, have a tax schedule which uh, uh, eliminates the exemptions. But at the same time, they bring down the tax rates. Uh, you can have four or five, six tax rates. You know, if there is some uncertainty, you know, that yeah, with only two tax rates or three tax rates and no exemptions uh, 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 given somehow and lower tax rates, if there is fear that this is going to lead to reduced uh, uh, revenues, then, you know, the government could use four or five tax uh, uh, tax rates. Uh, today, you know, computers, uh, uh, the, the big effort of the taxpayer is in figuring out the exemptions today. So once you are done, but, you, but you, you know, you know, Mr. Mr. Banerjee, if I may come to it, and I'll come to the new yes, tax please. regime. Please. We please. we we need to unpack that. But when you talk about exemptions and that sort of forcing you where to spend your money, now the yeah. idea always seemed to be to push. Uh, taxpayers to spend their money virtuously. So, for example, all the exemptions on home loans did push the boom of that sector in India to some extent. Uh, exemptions which are given for health insurance or for, uh, you know, life insurance policies or towards some sort of savings or government bonds. Uh, the idea was always or seems to be to push expenditure in a virtuous path or a virtuous direction. Do you think there's no merit to that? Well, look, you know, what is the virtue here? You're trying to do good to me as the taxpayer. Well, allow me to judge. Uh, why, why am I not be the best judge of uh, what is good for me? Uh, how will the government know? You know, each of us has a different uh, uh, situation. Uh, 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 you know the the uh, burden on the 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 burden of disease may be different across families. The uh, needs for savings may be different across families. Uh, 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 the needs for housing may be different across families. Allow the taxpayer to make that decision. I think that is the point here. That uh, 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 what we are saying. Uh, the, the point you are making is that you know we we got a state which. Uh, 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 and knows better than me, uh, the taxpayer, on what is good for me. And, the point and I'm I making, think, you know, actually, sir, the, the virtue is not from the point of view of the taxpayer, but from where money is going and whether it's a good idea for the nation. So, for example, you give a boost to a sector or a certain kind of saving, uh, and that seems to benefit the larger good or the greater good. That was the so, thought behind it, wasn't it? Yeah, well, so I would like to be convinced that that it is actually for the greater good. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you can possibly make a case for, for example, you know, gi giving the uh, uh, break on the interest payments on loans that you borrow for housing, because, you know, if, if you make the argument that uh, uh, investment in housing somehow uh, is, is a major investment in anybody's life and most families will in their lifetime will make that kind of uh, investment and all uh, and that it boosts the economy the growth it boosts growth uh, 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 fair enough you know some so in 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 one or two exceptions of that nature fine you can make the compromise but i think you know to to have so many of these exemptions uh, and 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 face it you know we are not talking about uh, just the housing uh, 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 the the, the, the uh, deduction of interest payments on your housing loans, but we are talking about tons of exemptions. You know, the whole system is written with exemptions. You know, travel money, uh, how uh, whether you spend 
on right. your meals, hotels, this, that, you know, right. all kinds of uh, 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 deductions are there. So, I, I, I think on balance, uh, there's a lot of room to, to, to remove those exemptions. So, the you know, you spoke about the new tax regime and uh, how, uh, in your view and from the straw poll that you conducted around you, it's not very popular. That seems to be the general consensus. There's no final data, but the general consensus seems to be that the new tax regime hasn't really taken off. People haven't wanted to give up exemptions even for lower taxes. And the buzz is that the new tax regime may be sweetened, so they may add exemptions to it. Do you think that that's the only way to make it work? Because Indian taxpayers love their exemptions. Well, then you don't need a reform, right? I mean, <laughs> if that's the view you take. Uh, but I personally think that that uh, view has not been tested, simply because uh, in, in, in the alternative that has been provided so far, uh, the, the one uh, in the 2020-21 budget, Mm -hmm. uh, the tax rate was, sim was simply too high. I mean, I talked to my brother. He says that, well, you know, uh, uh, and, and he's not, you know, uh, he's retired, uh, uh, lives on pension, uh, or, or actually it's just interest income. Uh, uh, and, and he said even for him, it was not worthwhile, actually, to use the second, the, the, the alternative, exemption-free al uh, alternative, uh, uh, which means that the tax rates uh, without exemption were simply too high for uh, anybody to, to take advantage, you know. I mean, this is a case example I'm giving you. It's, 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 it's very middle class, uh, 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 nothing, uh, you know, extraordinary at all. Uh, and yet, uh, uh, the, the, uh, he, my brother chose the, the, the original route. Um, uh, so only, as I said, in my case, you know, there's zero exemption. So fine, you know, some advantage to so, using So what, the, what uh, would make the new tax regime uh, essentially a tax system with no exemptions work and be palatable and fair. Let's be honest, the uh, middle class taxpayer hasn't got a, a real break from the government for a while. So what would be, you know, a fair sort of a proportion? How low would the taxes need to be to justify lopping off all the exemptions? It is not very difficult to figure out. I don't have all the data, but the government does. Uh, you take last year's uh, tax payments. Uh, the government knows who took what exemptions, uh, how much tax they paid, how much was their income. So from those data, it can be figured, you know, if you were to take out exemptions, uh, how far you can bring the tax rates down so that the tax revenue is still the same as before. Uh, and, and so it is something that can be figured out. Uh, also, if the government, you know, uh, uh, feels that uh, uh, there is some risk involved, then it can have multiple tax rates, you know, five or six tax, uh, tax rates, depending on the income levels. Uh, and uh, certainly, you know, it can provide tax tables, computers can calculate the taxes. Once exemptions are taken out, all the taxpayer has to figure out, you know, the taxable income is more easily figured out, and then it's just in which tax bracket you fall, you'll get the tax rate. So I, I think it can be done, and until and unless the government once tries it, right, the option has to be given, only then we will know whether people actually want exemptions or they don't. My hunch is that most people will actually come to you, begin using the uh, 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 new tax uh, tax rates uh, so that it gives them greater freedom to use their own income in the way they want to use it. Uh, 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 so I think it's a win-win kind of reform. Uh, the government doesn't have to lose revenue and the uh, taxpayer gets lower tax rates and gets to spend it the way uh, the taxpayer wants. You know, the, uh, the chatter and the populist talk is that the middle class, the salaried middle class deserves a lower tax rate. Uh, do you think the fiscal space for this exists right now? The target this year is 6.4%. The finance minister said we will hit it. And we're expecting a lowered target and lowered glide path going ahead. But do you think at this juncture, India really has the space to spend? Well, I personally don't think that, uh, you know, uh, the, the government should uh, 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 give exemptions or lower tax rates so as to reduce its revenues. I think, you know, it needs to uh, continue to have uh, 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 better and better tax collections because uh, uh, otherwise you compromise uh, for not a very good reason uh, the uh, fiscal consolidation objective. 
So that I would not encourage. Uh, I also feel that you know the, uh, uh, the the government needs to keep up the particularly the capital expenditure. Uh, this government has shown fantastic ability to build up infrastructure at speed and on scale. Uh, uh, you know, uh, practically, we have not seen this kind of uh, rapid uh, uh, infrastructure build up uh, uh, with this efficiency. So I would like that to continue. So if we if we compromise on tax revenues, then all those other objectives will. Defense also needs a bit more expenditure. Uh, so you know, the government really uh, doesn't have that much room to allow revenues to fall. So so this is why I say that you know, if you actually do that personal income tax reform, you can satisfy the taxpayer because you will be lowering the tax rates. You will not lose your revenue. Uh, and uh, efficiency, actually, of expenditures would uh, improve. So I think all in all, this is a very win-win kind of reform. What about the other sort of announcements you would like to see within the budget? There's a lot of talk that we may see an extension of the PLI scheme. Do you think there is enough data to suggest that the PLI scheme has actually achieved its goals and should we be expanding the ambit of something like a production linked incentive scheme yeah you know look uh, i've never been very uh, 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 persuaded on on pli scheme personally i'm one of the few sort of you know uh, uh, economists who have been a little skeptical on this front uh, because you see ultimately the goal has to be for manufacturing as a whole to flourish uh, and and certainly, you know, PLI as well as protection can give you boost in certain sectors. You know, sectors that get the protection, sectors that get the subsidy, will undoubtedly do better. You know, naturally, it improves the profitability for the entrepreneurs. So th those sectors will do better. But the question is whether the manufacturing as a whole will do better, and that we have not seen. You know, so manufacturing as a whole ultimately requires good policies. Uh, uh, policies in which uh, investors will flock to India, uh, uh, policies that uh, would allow the new alternative supply chains to be built uh, uh, with India at, as its focus, uh, as its hub. So for that, you need better policies ultimately, you know, and how much subsidy can you give really ultimately, you know, uh, for the entrepreneur also two or three, two years, three years, four years, you can give subsidy, but ultimately the entrepreneur is going to have to survive without subsidy. So, so, you know, the, the, the sustainable kind of investment that we are looking for, and uh, uh, obviously, if, uh, don't get me wrong, investors love it, you know, and, and foreign multinationals also, when they come in, if they think, you know, they want to come in anyway, and they can, in the process, get a few hundred million dollars worth of subsidy, why not? So they would love it. They will never say that, no, no, this, this is of no use. But uh, uh, ultimately, to me, as an analyst, as an economist, really, subsidies are very, uh, you know, it's very hard to build up a, a whole wide manufacturing sector on the back of subsidies. In the end, good policies cannot be substituted by these uh, either protection or, or subsidies. You know, talking about product protection, um, are we likely to see, in your view, more of those custom duty hikes? Uh, and this sort of surge of protectionism is now in vogue globally. Um, in your view, should there be now a break on some of these? Most certainly. In my view, actually, we need to not only have a break from it, but we also need to reverse some of what we have done. You see, look, uh, the, the big tariff increases happened in 2018-19. And that happened in the context of a GST, which had not yet, you know, begun to function uh, uh, well. Uh, remember that the GST had been implemented, uh, started implementing in July 2017, and initial revenue losses were large. So I think at that time, the then finance minister, Mr. Jaitley, uh, 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 consciously reversed several uh, years, actually uh, two decades of policy, uh, and raised uh, tariff custom duties on about 40% of our uh, 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 tariff lines. Uh, almost 40% items, you know, experience increase in tariff duties uh, in that year. So now, you know, the GST is working well. Uh, even the direct taxes have been uh, functioning quite well, uh, uh, showing good buoyancy uh, in, in, in the last year, uh, two years. Uh, so given that fact, I think, you know, the revenue uh, uh, goal of custom duties, which was to begin with was wrong, you know, custom duties are not supposed to be revenue instrument. They are instruments of protection, but not of, of, of revenue. But now that anyway, the revenues are doing well, 
I think that's this is a time to begin rolling back uh, at least those custom duties which were imposed particularly in 1819 with revenue as the objective. Absolutely. Well, we'll uh, wait and see what happens and we hope to catch up with you again post the budget. Thank you so much, Mr. Panagria, for joining us on the show.